hour two, the best game of the day really so far went to overtime in Rhode Island here. Day one of the NCAA tournament on Mad Dog Unleashed. We go to seven tonight, by the way. Knocked off Oklahoma, 83-78. Now, he tried to recruit him a long time ago, but he went to Seton Hall instead. <laughs> now, we talked to the winning coach today. Uh, the Hurley family, of course, uh, rough day yesterday. They bounced back today. And Danny says hello. Danny, always a pleasure. You know who I am. And, of course, your old buddy Bob Wenzel. How are you today, okay? Yeah, it's a pleasure to be on with you guys. Danny, that's a great win. And, and, that's a great win, and I'll tell you right now, that's a rough travel. Let's do that first. Sunday Sunday night, I talked to more about it on a plane at 9 o'clock. You don't get out to Pittsburgh. You get a, I would have to bus to, Pitts, to New York and then bus out to Pittsburgh because of the weather and then play 12 o'clock on a Thursday afternoon. That is a very, very hard travel for the Rams those last couple days, no? Well, we also played. I mean, we, we played Friday. We played Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You know the the, the previous you know this past weekend, you know in the, in, in the championship of the eight ten tournament, lost that close game to Davidson. You know took a took a, a Southwest flight at around nine forty five, got in around midnight on Sunday night. You know and then and then hopped on that plus Monday night. Um, you know but listen, it's the Atlantic Ten. You know we uh, you know we don't have too many <laughs> charters. Uh, you know we don't have uh, you know all of the all the greatest you know facilities and bells and whistles. But what we do have is, I think, a, a, a gritty team, a, a really talented team, you know, and a team that plays with an edge. And, and I think all the, you know, those bus trips and, you know, and, and kind of, you know, you know the, the snow and the cold weather during the winter, it just it gives you that edginess that you need to, uh, you know, to miss that layup at the end of regulation today but have the, the character and the guts to, to play an even better five minutes in overtime. Danny, I was so impressed with two players. One, E.C. Matthews, obviously, you had the two-point lead. He made the three. You went crazy on the sideline. But when Langevin goes to the line and makes two, I mean, he's a 50% free-throw shooter. Here you are in, in uh, playing in the NCAA tournament. How did you feel when those went down? Well, I just said one thing to him while he was at the foul line, and I just I, I mouthed to him, you know, you got these, you're from Jersey. <laughs> you know, guys, guys from Jersey, man, whether they're 55 or 48% free throw shooter, you, you play, you know, in the metropolitan area or North Jersey, man, you've played in a lot of big games and you're not going to be spooked when you got to the line. And then, and then EC Matthews, I mean, I, I don't know if there's a, uh, a, a talent of his level that's been through more adversity in terms of injury the last couple of years. And, you know, when that ball was in the air and that's on that, that three on the right wing, I just knew it was going in. Uh, you know, the basketball gods, uh, you know, deserve to be in his corner. Uh, it, it was unbelievable to watch, man, and congratulations. I mean, um, think, thinking now, uh, give our audience a sense. You've played early, you won, and now you can watch it. Give us a sense of what you're going to do now with your team. You know, obviously you have some media obligations tomorrow in practice, but now are you going to enjoy the rest of the games? Is it, you know, give us a sense of things. Yeah, we're, we're going to let the guys relax, and we're going to we're going to send those guys out to a nice restaurant, and you know, in Philly, and you know, they played real well, so maybe they get Ruth Chris tonight instead of the, you know, instead <laughs> yeah. of, you know, <laughs> you know, instead of uh, Chipotle or something. So, uh, you know, those guys are going to get to enjoy this and bask in it. But I mean, we're, we're going to get started, obviously, uh, on Duke here if they're able to, you know, finish this one off. And what we're going to try to do is. You know, is focus on the games that they've kind of struggled in. You know, the you know the Virginia Tech game on the road, the Boston College game on the road, because you know, they're a scary team to look at in person on that court. You know, the length, the you know the the, the, the talent, the, the volume of first round picks, and you know the, the coaches are going to be super busy through through tip off on Saturday, trying to put together a game plan that would give us a chance to, to be in that game uh, in the second half. You know, I'll tell you too, Coach, you probably didn't like the idea that the whole world was killing Oklahoma and why they were in the tournament in the last three or four days. I mean, you know, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma didn't win a game on the road in the last three months of the season. I mean, that's the last thing Lon Kruger needs is extra motivation with his team. You know what? Nobody thinks we're any good. We don't belong here. Let's go show them. That probably ran through your mind in these last three days, playing a, you know, annoyed Sooner ball club, and they played well today, so that probably gave you a little hesitation going into this afternoon's game, right? Yeah, I mean, 100%, Chris. Uh, I was cringing as I was watching, you know, the talking heads on ESPN, uh, you know, just kind of crap all over those guys, and, and, 
you know, it did. It generated, I think, an us against the world mentality for their team. Plus, it was bad enough. I started with their early season games with the preparation and the scouts. So, you know, watching their early season, you know, Northwestern at home, Wichita State in OKC, it was scary the way that they were playing offense and how prolific they were. And then just when you're out on the court with, with, with Trey Young in general, I mean, like every dribble that that guy takes, when he has that ball, it's like it's disconcerting just to have him running around on the court. Just with, uh, he just he's such a unique player. You know, he reminds me of just you know the guys that a guy like Allen Iverson, who unfortunately for me I had to guard. You know, at, at Georgetown in terms of like he's like a a game breaker every second that he has the ball. Yeah. Wow. Now, now, last thing for me, and I'll throw it back to Bob. You know, it's funny. That's a tough spot for your dad. I mean, first off, Arizona State, thank goodness, made the tournament. Uh, you know, they were the first up almost after Alabama on Sunday. And then they lose a tough game last night. Your father probably was at both. You probably watched. You got to forget about it come 12 o'clock. But having to watch your brother, you're tight, lose a two-point game. And then you're involved. That would have been a brutal 24 hours for Bob. Bob Sr., so thank God you saved the Hurley family today, correct? Yeah, especially my mom. I think my, my you know, you know my, my mom looked to be suffering more when I when I looked over my shoulder at some critical points. Uh, you know, it's just a habit. I, I, I you know, I, I just kind of, you know, when my dad's at the game, I kind of get a peek at him just to see kind of, you know, what his facial expression uh, looks like. But, you know, from all the, the reaction that we got when we went on Selection Sunday, my reaction to him getting in, you know, then him jumping in the pool. If we both would have got bounced out early, it would have been a whole, it would have been a little bit too much, I think, for uh, for all of us to take. Well, congratulations, Danny. I mean, your team, uh, you know, I had your Providence game this year, and uh, your team is an absolute joy to cover and to watch. They play with such great intensity and heart, and uh, it's, uh, it's because of uh, what you've instilled in them. So congratulations, and uh, good luck on the weekend, man. And, Coach, I appreciate that. And to set the record straight, I, I was ready to commit to Rutgers uh, right after my visit with Coach Wenzel. Uh, but then I got too many voices in my ear, dog. But I wanted to play for that man. Uh, so. Oh, uh, interesting. As he said that, he said he – I see, I know Wenzel from the old days in Jacksonville, even before your time, and he could recruit. He was – you know, then he was Bonnie Murphy, Otis McDuffie. He did a great job. And I know he's a good offensive coach. He would have let you shoot the ball a little bit uh, if you went <laughs> no, to no, Rutgers. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it would have been – and probably less defensive and rebounding drills. Than <laughs> and we would have won a lot more games, I'll tell you that, if we had him running the show. <laughs> He'd be still coaching Rutgers. <laughs> Danny, great job. Go get him against Duke, oh, uh, assuming Duke, on Saturday. Thanks for a few minutes here today. I appreciate it. No, it was a pleasure talking to you guys. Have a good one. All Take right, care. Danny Hurley there. Good win for them. Good performance. He told you about the travel. Uh, he understands what he has to do against Duke. Interesting way to do it. Look at the teams they lost to and see if you can pick yeah, up something yeah, yeah. If for the game here on Saturday. Yeah, see, that's what's great about um, the way you cover this tournament. And you get these guys on and you ask questions that are perceptive in nature. I mean, he just gave your audience a sense of what it's like to be involved in this whole wonderful thing thing we call the NCAA tournament that lasts for a month. And here's a, you know, you could get a perspective of a team that lost too, you know, but but the teams that win, this is what they go through. You take a deep breath, right? You try to eat a nice meal, you enjoy one another, and then you got to get back to work again. And how, okay, how are we going to beat this team? So he enjoys tonight and then tomorrow he'll go back to work. Yeah. And, and of course the assistants are working the whole time. But uh, the, obviously Duke is a team that has struggled with defense this year. They are classic man-to-man defense, and they've become a zone team. So what uh, Coach Hurley has to do is figure out the, the right way to attack that zone, okay, from his offensive perspective. But from his defensive perspective, I mean, Rhode Island is always tough. They're always aggressive. But they're going to have to deal with some super talented guys um, offensively, especially Bagley. And know. the size, yeah. because uh, Rhode they Island's a guard-oriented team, so that's going to be a tricky spot for them. Right. The inside guys defensively are going to have their hands full so okay do we play behind them and then double team do we play on the side of them and get physical and risk fouls 
Uh, do we try to front them and make them throw the lob passes? So these are the decisions that that have to go a into bit of your everything. game plan. You don't want to you don't want to get Duke to un, you know you want to get them guessing a little bit. So you do a little bit of everything. No correct? doubt about that. Maybe press a little two two one back into zone. You know that way you keep your bigs close to the basket. Duke is a good three point shooting team, so you have to be up on them. So you don't want this game to be in the eighties if you're Rhode Island. You want this game to be much you know in the sixties seventies. Uh, does Danny uh, does he let his father get involved in game planning in this situation? Does he pick up the phone tonight and ask him what he thinks? Uh, or does he let his father, you know, his father coach forever in a high school oh, yeah, level? Yeah, his father's one of the greatest all time coaches. I'm assuming yeah. that he can transfer what he knows in high school basketball to an NCAA game. Uh, does he keep him out of it? Does he get him involved? Does his father volunteer? How's that work in that situation? That's a very good question. Um, I don't know the answer to that personally. If I'm the father, I don't butt in. If, if if my son wants me to help out or if he wants to run some things by me, great. But I wouldn't initiate. Um, I don't know if Danny would just run some things by his dad. Probably would. Uh, he has a way of doing things. It's not exactly like his dad coached. Um, but a lot of it is internal, you know, um, internalized from his life, obviously. Uh, so he may run it. You know, I don't know. Uh, it wouldn't be a bad source. Usually, though, you're you're just you're you're closing ranks in in situations like this. It's your you and your assistants and your players that have been together the entire year. Now, st- now, did you recruit a lot of Bobby Hurley seniors players at St. Some, Anthony? Some, some, yeah, uh huh, some. But um, I didn't have a lot of success at at the time when I first got there. Rutgers was seven and twenty-two, three years in a row, and we had this great season our first year, and we made the NCAA tournament, right. big turnaround, and all that. So we got a lot of attention from from different quarters. But they were kind of hooked into Seton Hall, um, and a lot of their players went to Seton Hall and had very good success there. And it was right next door to there. PJ Carlissimo, terrific. terrific terrific uh, coach got, was was there at that time so we didn't get many we had a couple but but none none of the high high caliber guys All right, now when you coached in the NCAA did your family members go to the games did your father go to the games no he didn't he watched on television yeah. Did he know What's basketball well? He, yeah, yeah. I, I think not. Not certainly not. He was never a coach or anything. He he worked in the banking business and right. you know. So, but he he watched and like any parent would watch their. So sons. he did, yeah. he was not a guy who was going to be able to analyze the opponent. No, 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 no. Nothing, nothing like that. Yeah. Uh, I think the her, but but what you're alluding to with the Hurley family is certainly a unique situation, right? I mean, we've got two brothers who are coaching major college teams. We have a father who was the maybe the greatest high school coach ever. Um, Either him or the DeMatha coach, one or the other. Morgan Wooten. Yeah, right. Uh, So uh, that's a very unique situation. And and Danny, I've seen him mature as a coach from the time he's at Wagner until now, and I've done some of his games last year and some of his games this year. And, I mean, he's a very intense character on the sideline. His guys play with a chip on their shoulder. And even those things that he was saying to us about how uh, when you... um, when you don't have everything, the Rocky syndrome, sort of, okay? You don't have the charter flights. You I think fly that helps this, you know? them a little bit. Yeah. I, I you, think, can, you can sell that to your team. No doubt about it. And and I think it, it shows in the way they play. Yeah, did a good job. We'll get to more of that a little later on. Ohio State uh, trails South Dakota State three minutes in. Loyola and Miami going right down to the wire. They're at halftime, 28 apiece. Duke's up 14. NC State, Seton Hall in about 15 minutes. Uh, and we'll keep an eye on that. The other late game today is... There's one other late game. Let me see where, where the heck is it. But there's one other late game this afternoon. We got to keep an eye on it. Uh, it's Seton Hall, NC State, and that game is at 4:30, and that is in the Midwest region. So the two late games right now are the game that being played. This one's in um, uh, in Boise, the Ohio State game. And then Seton Hall is in Wichita, and that game will begin in 15 minutes. So we have four games done. We have two at the half. One that just begun and one that will begin in 12 minutes, 13 minutes. Bob and I will be with you all the afternoon on that. Eddie Erickson and Colin Schmeling, 17 after the hour here on Mando Gunley. <laughs>